Ks. Find a spot you like a lot. One, two, three. Find a spot you like a lot. Listen to me. Find a spot you like a lot. Three, two, one. Find a spot you like a lot. We'll have some fun. Even though things are different, we can still try to keep them the same. Let's start with the day. Hmm. The last time I saw you was a Monday, a Monday, a Monday. The last time I saw you was a Monday, but oh boy, that's certainly not today. That was a real long time ago. We had our first St. Patrick's Day party on this Monday, the 16th day. But we've been apart for quite a while. Everybody's worried about that virus. But now we are back together. Let's see how many days have passed. I didn't see you on Tuesday, the 17th day. I didn't see you on the 18th. What well, comes after 18? 19. We still were together. Oh, and then we got to the number nine. When you get to nine, it's so divine. Magical things start to happen. When you get to nine, it's so divine, something changes. So from 19, what's that new family? The 20 family. The 20 family. After 19 comes the 20 family. Oh, that's so easy breezy. We're done with the terrible teens. Now we're in the 20 family. I didn't see you on the 21st or the 22nd because those are S days, but we are back together now. We're back together now. Let's see if you can figure out what day it is. What day comes after Sunday? Hmm. Did you get it? It's Monday, mama -ma Monday, mama -ma Monday. That's the first day of the week. Yes, it's Monday, mama -ma Monday. Monday is the first day of our week, and it's a number that comes after 22. Think, think, think. The 20 family's easy. It's 23. When there's a two in the front seat and a three in the back seat, 20, 20, 20. Three. When there's a two in the front seat and a three in the back seat, 20, 20, 20, three. Today is Monday, the 23rd day of, what was that month we talked about? We all marched into March. We marched in March. And now we're coming towards the end of March. We said March comes in like that lion. I don't know, it's a little bit liony out there today, but it's supposed to be going out like that lamb. I can't wait for that warm weather that should be coming around the corner. Monday, the 23rd day of March. And remember, when you come back, the helpers have all been covered. I covered the names of all the helper cards. So now you have to remember your address. You have to look at that number. Everybody has a house number and your street, or maybe it's a lane or a court or an avenue. And we have some people who live in different towns. So we'll be looking that line as well, but we all live in New York. So that's all the same. So my helpers will be back soon and we'll be doing the family cards, mixing them up. I guess I'll have to do it myself today. Mix them up, mix them, mix them, mix them up. Mix them, mix them, mix them, mix them, mix them up. I'm gonna mix them high, mix them low. I really could use your help. Mix them high, my back. It's not as much fun without you here. Mix them, mix them, mix them, mix them up. Mix them, mix them, mix them, mix them, mix them, mix them up. Ooh, what family should we do today? I picked the you and family. The U and family, you have a vowel and a consonant together. Make the U and family. Let's make some rhymes. There's sun and fun and bun, hamburger bun, run ton and won. I won that race. There's sun and fun and run and ton and bun and won in the U and family. Well, today we're going to talk a little bit about why we can't come to school. And I'm not at all happy about it, and I bet you aren't either. There's not just so much work to be done, but we have so much fun when we play together. But right now we found out that that virus, that bug, that germ that's brand new, we don't know enough about it. So right now we have to help out by washing our hands. That's what we talked about in our song today. We have to cough at our elbow, <coughs> sneeze in our elbow, ah, chew, just like we always do at school. And right now we have to stay 
home. That's the safest place to be. We have to stay home. So those are all the things we can do to make sure that we all can be coming to school soon. But there's lots of people who do have to go to work. There's lots of people whose jobs we have to still have, even though we're staying home. Think of the firefighters, remember? Fires, you never know when they're gonna start. So fires, fires are still working hard. Police officers, they're the ones that keep our town and our state and our country safe. They still go to work every day. And doctors and nurses, they're still at the hospitals if people aren't feeling well. And the ambulance drivers, those emergency people are still out there working every day. I have a daughter, my second daughter, Melody. She is working now because she is a, a nurse practitioner at the medical center. So I'm gonna be trying to making some of these videos early in advance because I have to help her too. I'll be watching Christopher and Gabby and doing Nana School, just like you're doing it at home, and helping them continue to learn during the week because she doesn't have a choice. She has to go to work like all the other people. We have to say thank you to them because while we're staying home and a lot of your moms and dads can do their work from the house, lots of people do have to go still go to work to help make our country run. There are still some things that are open. The grocery store, everybody needs food, right? And you have to go to CVS if you need medicine. So those people that drive trucks have been busy now too. We have to say thank you to them. When I came into Piper today, most of the road was full of truck drivers. They're bringing food so that we have good food to eat. It goes to the AMP and Uncle Giuseppe's and to Chico's. We still need things to fix our, our oil burner if we don't have any heat. So Lowe's is open. Those people are doing a great job making sure we have anything we need if something breaks down. And even all the food places, they're cooking that food and putting it outside so we can pick it up. So there still are a lot of people who are going out there and helping, but it's really hard to stay at home. And they're also talking about social distancing. So if you do go to the grocery store, or if you are outside somewhere and there's other people, we have to remember social distancing because we found out that germs are kind of like bunnies or frogs. They can hop and they can hop from one person to another. So even when you're outside walking your dog or outside somewhere and there's other people, we have to be socially distant. So let's find out what that means. If you're outside walking and you see somebody else walking, you can't be close together. Usually, we're close together all the time when we hold hands in the circle, when we're playing with our friends, we stay close together. Social distancing means that we have to be farther apart. So if you're in line somewhere at the grocery store, you're gonna notice that mom and dad in the grocery cart are further away from someone else that's in the line also. Social distancing means that we're not holding hands or touching unless it's people in your family. We're a distance away from other people at all times. Social distancing, that's another thing that's going to keep us safe when we are outside. So what are some of the fun things you can do now that you're home and you're stuck in your house just like me? Well, I've had to think of lots of fun things because it wasn't the same as going to Pike Piper School. You can still go outside. Your playground at your house is still a safe and fun place to play. You can have online play dates. I saw some of you were talking to each other on your electronic devices. That's a good way to keep in touch. You can telephone grandma and grandpa. They probably miss being around you too. So give them a phone call every day and tell them what you're doing or FaceTime them. That way they can see your face. Game nights are so much fun. You can get out all those old board games you haven't had time to play because of soccer and Taekwondo and dance class now you can play some of those games and don't forget movie nights for your family my family and I had a great movie night Friday night we watched Frozen Frozen 2 and everyone had so much fun being together so those are all things that you can do so even though we can't be together and we can't be a lot of the places we usually go try to have some fun every single day well I have some exciting news even though we couldn't all be together for the vote I did take a vote on the last Monday we were here for which one of the plays we were going to do this year at Pied Piper School. That's always such an exciting time of year for Kathy. We 
take all those plays. I had about this many, remember? It was such a big stack. And we had to get rid of this one and get rid of that one. We talked about plays that had lots of characters. There's how many kids in our class? 40, 47? That's a very big number. So we couldn't pick any stories that had just a few characters. I wanna thank you boys and girls who brought stories into Pied Piper School for us to read, because even if we didn't pick them, you chose some great stories too. But so many didn't have enough characters. Then we talked about the setting, where the story takes place. We wanted something that was interesting. It shouldn't take place in a school. Toy Story 3, I think, took place in a plain nursery school. Well, that's where we are all the time. That's not as exciting as under the water or out in outer space. And the third thing that was the most important was action, action. We want action. We found out that some stories are interesting, like Cat in the Hat is a great story, but there's not a lot of action. It's just about a cat who goes to a house and makes a mess and cleans it up with his friends thing one and thing two. We wanted stories that were far more interesting than that. So we came down to just a few choices and on Monday, the 16th, the last time I saw many of you, we had two choices. We had Frozen 2, which is very exciting because that's brand new out in the movies and everyone's excited about that, and Lion King. And it was a very, very close vote. Very, very close, but drum roll, and the winner is Lion King. Lion King won for 2020 the pre-K play, and I think it was a very wise choice. I liked Frozen a lot. The music's awesome, the characters, but I'm thinking Frozen would be a better play for my summer camp because it's not as many children, and there's not as many parts. So I'm, I actually wrote it, so it's ready to go, and I think we can do that in the summertime. But our winner this year is Lion King. Now remember, there's 47 children. Not everyone's gonna be Simba. We have to look at all the different characters and decide which ones you like best. Remember, if you pick a lead character, one of the characters who's in all the scenes, you have to be very brave. And you have to use your big, loud theater voice. And you have, can't be worried if people are looking at you or giggling with you. Those are things that come with a big character. Not everybody has to be a lead character. The lead characters are Simba. Everybody knows that he is in every single scene. And then there's Mufasa, Simba's dad. He's in the first half of the play. And Nala. I think those are the biggest characters. If you want to try out for one of those characters, you certainly can. But remember, you need that loud voice and you need to be very brave. But there's so many other characters too. Don't forget, there's always an antagonist. We talked about that when you wrote your story. There's got to be a bad guy in every story. If this was just a story about some lion cubs playing around on the desert, it would not be too interesting. So you need a bad character, the antagonist, to bring something scary or interesting to the plot, what's going on in the story. So remember in The Little Mermaid, the antagonist was uh, Ursula. Yeah, Ursula. In Snow White, oh, the antagonist is the evil queen. There's always somebody, a bad guy, who's in a story to make the plot more interesting. And in this story, do you remember who it is? It's Scar. So if you like to be the bad guy, you want to try out for the part of Scar. He's the bad guy in our story. Then there's the funny characters. And if you want to be a funny character, remember that people are going to laugh at you a little bit. That's the whole idea. Life wouldn't be much fun without funny characters. So I think the funniest is probably Pumbaa. Pumbaa gets most of the laughs in Lion King. And then there's Timon, Rafiki, he's kind of silly. Zazu, oh, and don't forget the head hyenas. Shenzi, I wish you were here. You always help me remember things. Banzai, Ed, oh, and we probably will have one more. I think I'll name him Fred. Four head hyenas, and oh, they're gonna be bumping into each other and make everybody laugh in Lion King. 
And then there's group parts. So if you don't want to stand in front of everybody all by yourself and talk or sing, you can be part of a group. It's always fun to be part of a group. The wildebeest, oh, they always make me laugh. In my story of Lion King, the wildebeest are always interested in how their hair looks and how many flowers they can eat while they graze on the desert. There's also the lionesses, Sarabi and Sarabini. They're a big part of the play as well. And then there's the hyenas. Everybody likes being a hyena. They're just a fun, fun character. And we also have a couple groundhogs who deliver messages to Mufasa. So I think there's a part for everybody here on Lion King. You ready for the story? All right, this is our winning story. This is it, Lion King. Oh, before I read to you, I do want to announce for the yellow group too, I know you were interested in their selection. They ended up with Sneetches on the Beaches. It beat out, what was that other story there? Oh, the Little Red Hen, the Little Red Hen. This one won, I think they like to run around in the circle. And the blue group, Lorax won, which is awesome. Their second choice was um, the Shoemaker and the Elves. I think they like this one better um, with the, the Brown Babalutes and the Swanee Swans. So they're gonna be practicing the Lorax. Are you ready? Well, get comfortable. You don't have to sit crisscross applesauce now. Get comfortable, lay on your bed. You can lay on your couch. Let's read The Lion King. Open your eyes, open your ears, zip it, button it, lock it. Put it in your pocket. The Lion King. The sun came up over the African plains. It was hot and brilliant just as it has done since the beginning of time. Today, the first rays of the morning sun fell on an astonishing sight. Across the vast pride lands, animals moved in great herds, heading for a single destination. Elephants plodded steadily. Antelopes leaped through the grass. Giraffes loped. Cheetahs raced. Ants marched in a single line, while huge flocks of flamingos winged across the sky. They were all journeying to Pride Rock to celebrate the birth of King Mufasa's son. Above the gathering, on the top of Pride Rock, Rafiki, the wise old mystic, approached King Mufasa and Queen Sarabi. He cracked open a gourd, dipped his fingers in the liquid, and made a special mark on the infant's forehead. Then he carried the cub to the edge of the rock and held it high. A loud cheer rose from the plains. Elephants trumpeted, monkeys screeched, zebras, rhinos, and a host of other animals stamped their hooves. Then a hush fell over the gathering. Together, the animals of Mufasa's kingdom knelt before Simba, their new prince. Yet, one family member did not attend the ceremony. Mufasa's brother, Scar, had spent the entire morning toying with a mouse. He was just about to eat it when Zazu, the king's major domo, appeared. Startled, Scar turned and the mouse scampered away. Now look, Zazu, you've made me lose my lunch, Scar complained. You'll lose more than your lunch when the king gets through with you. But Scar wasn't listening. He was still hungry and Zazu was beginning to look pretty tasty. So Scar pounced, but before he had time to eat Zazu, a voice commanded, drop him. Scar released the bird. Well, if it isn't my big brother, he sneered. Sarabi and I didn't see you at the presentation of Simba, Mufasa said. Is anything wrong? That was today, Scar said. Oh, I feel simply awful. It must have slipped my mind. Well, as slippery as your mind is, you are the king's brother, Zazu reminded him. Zazu also reminded Scar that he should have been the first in line to congratulate his brother, I was the first in line until that little hairball was born, retorted Scar. That hairball is my son, Mufasa reminded him, and your new king. I shall practice my curtsies, Scar said. Then he turned his back on them and walked away. The days passed and Simba grew from an infant into a cub. One morning before dawn, Mufasa led Simba to the top of Pride Rock. As the sun edged over the horizon, Mufasa said, Simba, look, everything the light touches is your, our kingdom. A king's time as ruler rises and falls like the sun. One day, the sun will set on my time here and will rise with you as the new king. And all this will be mine? Wow, said Simba looking around. But what about that shadowy place? 
Mufasa turned to his son. That is beyond our borders. You must never go there, Simba. As they wandered away from Pride Rock, Mufasa said, Simba, everything you see exists together in a delicate balance. As king, you will need to understand that balance and respect all creatures because we are all connected in the great circle of life. The young cub tried to listen, but a grasshopper caught his eye and he chased after it. Just then, Zazu arrived with a morning report. Sir, sir, hyenas are crossed into the Pride Land. Sire, we must hurry. Quickly, the king ordered his major domo to take Simba home. Aw, Dad, can I come? Simba whined. No, son, his father replied, and he took off after the dark shapes in the distance. After Zazu made sure that Simba was home safely, the excited cub found Scar sunning himself on a rock. Hey, Uncle Scar, my dad just showed me the whole kingdom and I'm gonna rule it all. Scar scowled, then slowly he began to smile. So, your father showed you the whole kingdom, did he? Did he show you what's beyond that rise at the border? No, he and I said, he said I can't go there. Oh, he's absolutely right, Scar replied. It's far too dangerous. Only the bravest, bravest of lions go there. An elephant graveyard is no place for a young prince. An elephant what? said Simba. Wow. Oh dear, I've said too much, said Scar, grinning slyly. Just do me a favor. Promise me that you'll never visit that dreadful place. And remember, it's our little secret. As Scar backed away, Simba stared at the distant spot on the horizon. He had no idea that Scar had cleverly set a trap to rid himself of the future king forever. Simba knew that he'd be disobeying his father if he went into the elephant graveyard, but hadn't Uncle Scar said that only the bravest of lions dared venture there? Wouldn't Dad be proud of such a brave cub? Thought Simba. Soon after Simba went in search of his best friend Nala, he was happy to find Nala with her mother, Serafina, and Queen Sarabi. Mom, I just heard about this great place. Can Nala and I go, please, please, please? Where is this place, Simba? His mother asked. Oh, well, uh, it's near the water hole, the cub fibbed. Uncle Scar said it was secret. All right, said Serabini, as long as Zazu goes with you. Oh, no, not Zazu. He spoils everything. As Zazu led the way, Simba whispered to Nala, we got to get rid of him. We're not going to the water hole. We're going to an elephant graveyard. When Zazu looked back and saw them whispering, he said, Oh, just look at you two. Your parents will be thrilled. One day, you two are going to be married. It's a tradition. Marry her? Forget it, said Simba. I can't marry her. She's my best friend. And besides, when I'm king, I can do just as I please. Zazu shook his head. With an attitude like that, you'll be a pretty pathetic king. Simba laughed at Zazu. I can't wait to be the king, the cub shouted, and he scampered away across the plains. Nala followed, and the two of them darted in and out of the herd of the zebras and escaped from Zazu. It worked, it worked, we lost Zazu, said Simba laughing. Now we can look for that elephant graveyard. In the spirit of victory, Simba playfully leapt for Nala, but she was too quick for him and flipped him onto his back. Together they tumbled down a hill and landed with a thud. Next to them was a huge elephant skull. Wow, this is it, we made it, said Simba. Wow, said Nala, it's really creepy. Come on, let's check it out, said Simba. Before they could climb into the skull, Zazu caught up with them. We're way beyond the borders of Pride Rock, he said, and right now we are all in very real danger. I laugh in the face of danger, said the brave lion cub. <laughs> replied the elephant skull. Then out of the skull's cavernous eye holes popped three slobbering hyenas. Well, 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 Banzai, what do we got here? Said one hyena. Well, I don't know, Shenzi, answered the others. What do you think, Ed? Ed the third hyena just licked his lips and laughed. <laughs> Bearing their fangs and wide grins, the hyenas crept towards the trespassers. They grabbed Zazu first. 
Why don't you pick on someone your own size? Simba shouted. The hyenas dropped Zazu and raced after the cubs. When Shenzi threatened Nala, Simba swiped his claws right across that hyena's nose. The hyenas raced after the cubs, who found themselves trapped inside the bones of the elephant's rib cage. Then the angry hyenas advanced towards Simba, their sharp teeth gleaming. A giant paw suddenly struck Shenzi, sending him and the other hyenas into a pile of bones. No match for the powerful Lion King. The beaten and bruised hyenas fled. Don't you ever come near my son again, Mufasa roared after them. Zazu, Mufasa commanded, take Nala home. I have to teach my son a lesson. As Simba sheepishly approached his father, Mufasa said, Simba, I'm very disappointed in you. I was just trying to be brave, Dad, just like you. Mufasa tried to smile. I'm only brave when I have to be Simba. Being brave doesn't mean going to look for trouble. Overhead, the stars began to dot the evening sky. Simba looked at his father and said, we'll always be together, right, Dad? Simba, let me tell you something my father told me. Look at those stars, the great kings of the past. Look down on us from those stars. They will always be there to guide you, and so will I. Later that evening, Scar searched out the hyenas. Did you bring us something? Something good to eat, Scar? Old buddy? Banzai asked. You really don't deserve this, said Scar, tossing them a chunk of meat. I practically gift wrapped those cubs for you, and you couldn't even dispose of them. What are we supposed to do, said Banzai. Kill Mufasa? Precisely right, said Scar. As the hyenas ate ravenously, Scar thought of another plan. This time, there'd be no escape for Simba or for his father, Mufasa. The next day, Scar approached Simba. Your father has a surprise for you, he said. Scar led the cub down the steep walls of a gorge. Will I like the surprise, huh, Uncle, Ch Uncle Scar? Will I like it, huh? Simba, it's to die for. Now wait here. And find out, Scar said, leaving Simba behind. Not far from where Simba waited, a herd of wildebeest grazed. Not far from the herd, three hyenas waited too. They were waiting for a signal from Scar. Shunzai saw him first. There it is! There it is! Let's go! The hyenas ran towards the wildebeest. Sensing danger, the herd panicked and stampeded into the gorge straight towards Simba. Meanwhile, Mufasa and Zazu noticed the dust rising from the gorge. Mufasa, Scar screamed, appearing from behind a rock. Quick, stampede, Simba's down there. With no thought for his own safety, the Lion King leaped into the gorge and snatched the cub out of the path of the deadly hooves. Mufasa jumped onto a rocky ledge and set Simba down. Meanwhile, Mufasa felt the rocky wall crumble beneath his hind paws. He fell back into the herd. Badly hurt, he tried to climb another cliff. Looking up, he saw Scar, brother, Brother, please help me, Mufasa pleaded. Scar leaned towards Mufasa and pulled him close. Long live the king, he whispered, and then he let him go. Mufasa lost his grip and disappeared beneath a mass of moving animals. Unaware of what Scar had done, Simba ran to see his father had fallen. When the wildebeest were gone, he raced towards him in the dust-filled gorge. There Simba found his father. He nuzzled the body, but... The great Lion King was gone. Scar appeared beside Simba. What have you done, Simba? He said. He tried to save me, the cub answered. If it weren't for you, your father would still be alive. Scar snarled. Run away, Simba. Run away and never, never return. Confused and heartbroken, Simba began to run. He didn't see the hyenas join Scar or hear his uncle give the orders to get rid of Simba, too. At the edge of a plateau, the hyenas caught up with Simba. There was only one way for the lion cub to escape. He leaped off the plateau into a tangle of horns. The hyenas did not have the courage to follow. They could only stand at the edge of the plateau and jeer. Nana, nana, poo, poo, don't come back. And if you ever come back, we'll kill you, they shouted after him. Certain that Simba had been killed, Scar returned to Pride Rock with the news. Mufasa died a hero. Scar solemnly announced. He gave his own life to save his son, but alas, both are dead. Sarabini, Nala, and the other lionesses began to mourn. Scar slowly ascended Mufasa's throne. It was as a heavy heart that I become your new king. 
Rafiki, shaking his head in disbelief, watched from a distance. Injured and exhausted by his flight from the hyenas, Simba stumbled across the hot African wasteland. Above him against the blazing midday sky, vultures circled. Unable to go farther, Simba fell to his knees and fainted. When he opened his eyes again, the burning sun and the vultures were gone, but a mercat and a warthog were standing over him. Are you okay, kid? asked the mercat. You nearly died, said the warthog, but we saved you. Thanks for your help, Simba replied. He stood on wobbly legs and started to leave. The mercat called after the shaky cub. Where are you from, kid? It doesn't matter, Simba said quietly. Then he admitted, I did something terrible and I don't want to talk about it. Then you're an outcast, cried the mercat. So are we. My name's Timon, and this here's my best friend, Pumbaa. Take my advice, kid. You gotta put your past behind you. No past, no future, no worries. Hakuna Matata. With nowhere else to go, Simba followed Timon and Pumbaa to their jungle home. As Timon handed Simba some wiggly bugs to eat, the mercat repeated, this is a great life. No rules, no responsibilities, and best of all, no worries. Time passed. In the carefree company of his new friends, Simba grew into a young lion. One night, while the three of them were gazing at the stars, Simba said, Someone once told me that the great kings of the past are up there watching over us. Pumbaa and Timon laughed. <laughs> Who would have told you a crazy thing like that, said Timon. Simba, thinking of his father, went silent. The next day, as Simba was wandering through the jungle, he heard his friends shouting for help. Simba hurried towards the sound. Pumbaa was caught beneath the trunk of a fallen tree, and Timon was trying to protect him from a hungry young lioness. As she leapt, Simba threw himself forward and knocked the lioness aside. For a moment, they tussled. Then the lioness pinned him to the ground and stared down at him. Simba, she said hesitantly. Nala, he replied. As the lions hugged, Timon cried, what's going on around here? Simba laughed and introduced Nala to his friends. She smiled politely, but she could not stop staring at Simba. Finally, she said, everyone thinks you're dead, Simba. They do, Simba replied. Yes, Scar told us about the stampede. What else did he tell you? Simba asked cautiously. What else matters, Nala exclaimed. You're alive, and that means you're the king. King? cried Timon and Pumbaa in surprise. Excusing themselves, Simba and Nala strolled through the jungle. Scar let the hyenas take over the pride land, Nala said. Everything's destroyed. There's no food, no water. Simba, if you don't do something soon, everyone will starve. I can't go back, he insisted. Nala didn't understand why Simba refused to accept responsibility and help the pride land. What happened to you, she asked. You are not the Simba that I remembered. You're right said Simba. I'm not. Now are you satisfied? Before he turned to leave, Simba added angrily, listen, you think you can just show up and tell me how to live my life? You don't even know what I've been through. Nala called after him, but Simba ignored him. That night, while the others slept, Simba sat on a rock and gazed at the twinkling sky. I don't care what anyone says, he said out loud. I won't go back. What would it prove anyway? It won't change anything. You can't change the past. Then Simba heard a strange noise. Somewhere in the jungle, someone was chanting. As if from nowhere, the bent figure of the old baboon appeared. Who are you? Simba asked, slightly annoyed. The question is, who are you? The baboon replied. Simba thought for a moment, then sighed. The old baboon said, I know your father. My father's dead. Simone replied, oh, no, no, he lied. I showed to you. Just follow old Rafiki. He know the way. The old baboon led Simba to a clear, smooth pool. Look down here, Rafiki advised. In the pool, Simba saw only his reflection. Look harder, that baboon insisted. A breeze rippled the water. When the pool became still, Simba stared at the face of his father. You see, Rafiki said, he lived in you. Simba heard a voice call his name, Simba, and he looked up and saw the image of his father in the stars. Simba, look inside yourself. You are more than what you have become. You must take your place in the circle of life. Remember who you are. You are my son and the one true king. Remember, remember, remember. The vision faded. 
Simba remained alone, thinking. The next morning, Nala, Timon, and Pumbaa looked all over for Simba. Finally, Rafiki caught up with them. You won't find Simba here, the baboon said. The king has returned. Timon asked, what do you mean? He's gone back to challenge his uncle, Nala replied. Ahead of them, Simba moved swiftly towards Pride Rock. As he crossed over his homeland, he saw ruin and destruction everywhere. For a moment, Simba hesitated. Then he felt a fresh wind and saw rain clouds gathered on the horizon. With renewed hope, he continued his journey. Soon Nala joined him, as did Pumbaa and even Timon. As they approached Pride Rock, they saw some hyenas. Pumbaa and Timon stayed behind to distract the pack. Nala went to find the lionesses, while Simba forged on alone in search of his mother. Meanwhile, the Pride Rock scar reigned without shame. Where is my hunting party? He shrieked at Sarabi. There's no food, she replied. The herd has moved on. We've only one choice. We must leave Pride Rock. We're not going anywhere, he growled. Sarabi replied, then you're sentencing us to death. Then so be it, I am the king and I make the rules. If you are half the king Mufasa was, Sarabi began. Enraged, Scar struck her and she fell. A tremendous roar echoed among the rocks. Scar whirled and saw a great lion before him. Mufasa, he gasped. No, 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 it can't be, you're dead. Weak and delirious, Scar backed away from the ghost. What do you want, he cried. Why are you here? Go away, go, leave me alone. Although many years had passed, Sarah Beanie still recognized her son. Simba, she said quietly, you're alive? Simba, Scar exclaimed. Then he glared at the hyenas who had failed to kill Mufasa's boy. This is my kingdom now, Simba proclaimed. Step down, Scar. Scar laughed. Well, I would, of course, but there's one little problem. And he gestured towards the hyenas. Quickly, the hyenas swarmed over Scar, over Simba. Enough, Scar finally cried. The hyenas drew back, providing a clear path for Scar to approach Simba, who was struggling to avoid falling to his death. Scar sneered. Now, where have I seen this before? Oh, yes. I remember. That's the way your father looked before I killed him. Gathering all his strength, Simba leapt towards his uncle. As they fought, Scar ordered the hyenas to help him. Moments later, Nala and the lionesses arrived. Along with Timon and Pumbaa, with fury, they attacked the hyenas, attempting to drive them away. As the groups clashed, lightning struck the dry grass of the flatland. The wind, now fierce, swept huge flames towards Pride Rock. During the battle, Simba became separated from his uncle. Then Simba saw Scar crawling up Pride Rock. Simba dashed up the steep face, dodging fire and smoke. This time, he trapped Scar at the edge. Simba, oh, you don't understand, Scar insisted. I didn't hurt your father. It was the hyenas. They are the enemy. Now that you're back, together we can defeat them. Run away, Scar. Simba commanded, repeating the advice his uncle had once given him, run away and never return. Scar started to slink away, but then he turned and he lunged for Simba. Acting swiftly, Simba hurled Scar off the cliff. The sounds of hungry hyenas drifted up from the gorge, revealing Scar's awful fate. As rain began to fall, Simba climbed to the top of Pride Rock. Then the clouds parted, revealing a star-filled sky. Simba roared triumphantly, and all who heard him reacted with joy. Soon, under the rule of a wise and brave king, the Pride Lands flourished. The herds returned to graze, and food was plentiful once again. Soon the animals gathered once more to celebrate the birth of the king's son. Simba and Nala watched proudly as Rafiki held their new cub high over Pride Rock. As the morning sun touched the African plain, Simba thought of something his father had once told him. A king's time as ruler rises and falls like the sun. One day the sun will set on my time and rise with you as the new king. Suddenly Simba would pass on these words someday to his own son, continuing the unbroken circle of life. Oh, I'm so glad you picked this story. It's one of my favorites and I can't stay wait to start working on it. We'll see you later for more Pipe Piper fun.